Hey everyone, welcome back to the Happy Even After podcast. So I am here today with Melissa Ledger, who is a dating expert and relationship coach. And her mission is to help women learn why they keep attracting the wrong men, how to become happily single, and how how to find yourself again. So this is a super juicy conversation. And Melissa has a really, really unique angle and approach to dating. So we're going to just jump right into this. Hey, Melissa, welcome. Hey, thank you so much. So glad to be here. All right. So your whole thing is, and you have right behind one of your shoulders, it says (laughs) gumball love. Um, And when I first came across you through social media and we connected, I'm like, what is this gumball love thing? So let's just start there. Yeah, absolutely. So gumball love is the illusion of love hidden in the addiction to the high of attention. So what I discovered over a long process of choosing the wrong guys over and over again is that some guys were addicted to the attention. And when I thought they were falling in love, they were high on all of the, what I call now the gumballs that they were getting. And now we have different flavors of attention. So uh, the gumball brand just continues to evolve and it's just getting so much better and so much more clear. But really, I think all of us are looking for the person who wants connection, that wants to fall in love, that can actually have a meaningful long-term relationship. We're not looking for the guy that's the player or uh, I, I'll give you my my taglines. We have the player or the drama queen, the brat, the guy that needs you to entertain him all the time. He's the guy you can't take to a uh, family function without babysitting him or he's uh, what, what I call the troll in the corner. You know, he's on his phone. He doesn't want to interact with anybody. Uh, and then there's the the guy that's the cheater, you know, that you find out about another woman and here you've invested all this time. And now you realize, oh my God, there's some other chick. And now what do I do? I already have all these feelings. And then pretty soon you're in this dynamic that you never planned on being in. And so there's many more, there's eight flavors of attention that I've divided these into, but it's really about understanding, am I with somebody or even in the very beginning, what I love to help women do is really capture that right in the beginning. Is this somebody that is long-term or is this somebody that's just in it for the high, the quick fix, and then they're going to move on to the next person. So how do you make that determination? So, um, Really, it depends. Like the 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 most obvious are, uh, we'll take what I call the arouse me gumball guy, the red gumball guy, the guy that wants sex. So, uh, the red flags with him is he's going to lead with sex too early, or he's going to send a picture, or he's going to ask you for a picture. So when there's the the conversation departs from getting to know each other and it becomes about stimulating him in some way, validate me. He's like, stimulate me, validate me, soothe me, do something for me so that he gets high. So when you think about, oh, we're, Hey, where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. And then, Oh, send me a pic. It's like, that's the quarter and he wants the gumball. So if you feel like and you, as you learn this content more, you're, you'll start to see, ah, oh, that's a quarter for a gumball. This guy just wants me to stimulate him all the time, or he's looking for soothing. Some guys have the pity me gumball guy where he's the victim and he wants you to feel sorry for him and listen to a sad story. So all of a sudden you, you, you like this guy and you want, you want to get to know him, but now you're listening to a sad story, or now there's an ex that he's not over and you're becoming the therapist. And so there's all these dynamics where now are we soothing, we're validating, we're stimulating, we're numbing pain instead of developing connection and getting to know each other. So what are the red, what are the red flags? Like what is someone, what should someone be doing to make sure they don't get one of these gumballs? So the number one thing is to ha- to work on your own self-confidence. So if you are, you're coming out of a relationship or uh, you've dated the, a lot of these guys over and over again, I had uh, my previous academy, it was called the Back to You Academy, getting back to focusing on yourself and developing your own self-confidence. Sometimes we're jumping from guy to guy to guy and we never stop and actually spend time with ourselves because it's hard to see the red flags when we're beat down, when we're going through a breakup, when we're feeling emotional. So the the best place to be is you're at, you know, on the track to your best self. I don't think we ever arrive. I don't think we ever become, you know, fully evolved, but to be on that track is where I try to get women. So even taking a break from apps, taking a break from dating, just 
allow yourself to be alone, especially in, in your audience, if you're going through a divorce or you've just, you've just ended a whole relationship where you need time for healing. We're always jumping. The, the red flag is you're jumping into the relationship way too soon. You're going to miss the red flags because you're hurting. And so a guy that is like, oh my gosh, you have the most amazing lips ever. And I've never met anyone like you. And I can't believe like, that's a red flag right there. Some guy that's right out of the gate, pouring out all of those compliments because he's intensifying the relationship. And he's speaking of it as if it's further down the road than it actually is. And so if we're, if we're weak and we're feeling injured and we're heartbroken, those things can also be soothing. So all of a sudden we're the gumball girl, we're getting all of that validation. And then we get high off of that instead of being at a nice, calm, a nice, calm level where then we're making connection instead of trying to view the relationship from what I call the mountaintop. The gumball guy takes you to the mountaintop. So it can be feel very sexy. It can feel very intense. Even if there's another woman involved, pretty soon you're competing with the other woman and you're hoping that you win mm -hmm. instead of, wait a minute, what am I actually doing? Am I actually connecting and building a relationship with a solid foundation? So you talk about the difference between real love and gumball love. How do you know the difference? So the biggest difference is real love has friendship. Gumball love does not. If you look back to every jerk you've ever been with, I guarantee you, you are not really friends. He was friends. He was friendly when it benefited him. Sometimes people will be like, well, no, he was, he was my friend. Like we had really nice talks. Like, yeah, you had nice talks when he was getting something out of it, when he was down and out and then that talk was nice for him, but then was he your friend when he had nothing, when nothing was, he wasn't going to get any accolades for it. He's just, he was just there for you. And we all know what a real friend looks like. We have real girlfriends. You may have real guy friends where they're there for you. There's no agenda. Um, I call it the, the messy bun girlfriend. Like you, you meet for coffee with your messy bun and no makeup and you sit there for three hours. Like that's the person that's your real friend. And so you don't have to be anybody but yourself and they're not there to get anything from it other than just to spend time with you. That's when you know, okay, this is something that's either it is real love or it's building, but gumball love is a transactional relationship where you're always you always feel like I have to perform in some way. I can't just relax and just be myself. Mm, okay. So you talked about, you gave us a few of the flavors. We taught, you said there are eight flavors of gumballs. Yes. What are the other ones? Okay. So I'll just go in order. So red is arouse me. That's the, the player. Uh, the orange gumball is fight me. I tried to make them as color, make sense as color coded. So the orange is for fight me. And this is the drama king guy. So This is the guy that you're in a bunch of arguments. He's picking fights. He's constantly picking on you. And this can start with small things like, why do you wear red nail polish? Why do you dress up so much? Why are you wearing heels? Where are we, you know, those kinds of questions where you feel like you're being, um, you feel like you're being picked on. So that's when it starts, but then it grows into other things. Like he'll ask you, he's the guy that says he doesn't want drama. He's the guy that picks on you, thinks that you're crazy. So um, I actually have a better list. I'm going to look at my better list right back behind my, <laughs> my screen. So I'm not losing track here. Uh, so that's the drama king. And then the yellow gumball guy is the entertain me guy. I call him the brat. He's the one that is needs you to fuss over him. We talked about him already, like fuss over him. Uh, we have phrases for him. Take me to the parade or parade people in front of me. It's, it's the guy you feel like, oh, is this the right show for you? And do you want the remote? And, you know, so-and-so is going to be at the party and they really like talking about golf and you like golf. Like you feel like you can't just, you are, you're catering to this guy because he's moody and he gets, he gets like, I could do this little, <laughs> he's just like, he's fussy and he's, you know, then he's moody and now he's mad and you don't know why he's mad. And then you're like, oh great. Now he's mad. And then you feel like you have have to leave the event because your your entertain me gumball guy ran out of yellow gumballs like sometimes you're just like I don't know what else to do and then you're uh I thought of a great visual like you're you're at the event and he's over at a table looking at your looking at his phone and you're trying to engage with the people at the party and you're looking over at him like oh god is it, you just wish he would just be there with you but he won't so mm -hmm. 
he's a lot of different things, but mainly you feel like you're always jumping from one foot to the other, trying to satisfy him or pacify him. So the green gumball is, was green with envy. It's the guy that cheats. He is the win me gumball guy. So you feel like you're, you're in a relationship and then you find out about the other woman and you find out about her in various ways. You, you look at the phone, you've confronted him, or maybe he's like, I'm married, but we're not sleeping in the same bed. I'm sure you've heard that as a divorce Mm -hmm. lawyer many times. We're not sleeping in the same bed, but we're still in the same house. And I really like you. Um, the, the famous line for this guy is it's not fair that I met her before I met you. He's all confused. He's with the wife, but he really wants to be with you. And he didn't plan on this happening. And oh my God, I'm just so tortured now. And I need you to help me figure this out while I go home to another woman and try to date you at the same time. So that's the, uh, that's the win me guy, which is so frustrating. If you've ever been through that dynamic, um, The blue gumball guy, the guy with the blues, the pity me guy, pity me gumball guys, we call him the victim. He's the woe is me. He's the oversharer, the complainer, sad things don't go his way. So you're trying to have a relationship, but his stuff is always taking center stage. So it's never about the two of you. You're always focused on his stuff. And it's so hard because this is the guy you're attracted to. This is the guy you, you know, thought his lips were super luscious and you have all that chemistry. And now he's presenting these sad stories. And so it it can be anything. And sometimes it's legit. Like I dated a guy who was a cancer survivor. So he had a legitimate sad story, but that became what he lived on. And that was, it always came back to that. And so nobody could ever have any other problems because he, he'd actually survived it too. He wasn't even, he was cancer free. He should have been really happy, but he had this whole lifestyle built around feeling sad and feeling sorry for himself. And he kind of expected everybody else to do it. And he didn't lead with it necessarily right away, but eventually you got into it. And then, then, then you're all this stuff. If you don't know what you're looking for, you feel like you're caught and then, and then you're stuck and then you've invested the time. And now what do you do? So I definitely had a boyfriend like that. Really? Yeah. That just lived in the, what was his pity story? Oh, there were so many pity stories. You know, it was childhood money. Like there were, there was endless. And then I feel like some of the other gumballs was my second, second husband, my second ex. So I think I went through the whole rainbow of gumballs in all of, all of my uh, relationships. Yeah. You can have a pity me and then you can have an entertain me guy. Like the guy that feels sorry for himself. He's all, he can also be the entertain me. So, um, we're putting together a quiz so you can, uh, look at or be able to, uh, identify. Okay. And I'm, I'm working on the dynamics of how to put the quiz together because I want you to be able to see, okay, he's mainly a pity me guy, but coming right in second is entertain me. So you can really look for the red flags because <laughs> part of it is, you know, when you, when you can't see what's actually going on, then you're just you're on, you're in for the ride, but gumball yeah. love is a way for you to take one step back and go, Oh my God, I see what's actually happening. I see these signs. I see the patterns repeating. And then you start to see, Oh wait, this isn't me creating this. Cause this is what he tries to convince you. This is, this is your problem. You need, you're not entertaining enough. You've got to provide all of these things. You need to make me feel better. And that's why we're exhausted in these relationships. I think you need to make that quiz available to support women to give out on first dates. Yes. That's a, <laughs> that's a, a necessity before the date happens. You need to take this quiz. See if you're a gumball. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Exactly. So the last two are, uh, the idolize me gumball guy. That's the purple gumball. And that is the guy that we have named him the rock star. Look at me, talk about me could be like the guy that goes to the strip club, but this guy needs an audience. He wants you looking at him. He wants you talking about him. He wants you to tell that story about him that made him look super cool. Um, 
he uh, doesn't really like your story because that doesn't impress people. The one that he has impresses people. So he might be the guy that doesn't let you speak very much. So it's look at my, this is the guy on uh, dating profiles. Look at my car, look at my house, look at my boat, or he sends you the eggplant photo. I don't know how inappropriate your podcast yeah. is, <laughs> but he sends you his eggplant. Yeah. Um, and so the, that guy is look at me, look how amazing I am worship me or idolize me. And so it can also be a former, uh, you know, that guy that was in the band, uh, like not, not the marching band, but like, you know, he could be a former musician or he could be a, uh, like an actor or he had notoriety, or maybe he's still writing his high school glory days or college days when he was a football star and it's 20 years later and he's still trying to be that guy. That's Mm -hmm. the idolize me guy. And then the pink gumball guy, uh, this one is the, the bachelor. This is the guy that is the ghoster, the chase me gumball chase me. And you don't, this is the guy different from win me where you don't really know who the other women are, but you feel like he's the guy that he sends you great texts. Maybe you've gone on one amazing date, but then he just continues to kind of lead you on but you don't know when you're going to see him again. And he's like, he sends you that text like, Hey, we should hang out sometime. Or you don't hear from him for a week. And he's like, Hey, how was your weekend? And you're like, what the, what is the deal? We had this amazing date. And now this guy is super elusive, but he still keeps coming back. So what does that mean? And so what it means is you're in his Rolodex and he flips through and keeps you because you're one of the five or six he's maintaining and so he took five girls on amazing dates in the last couple of weeks. And now he's so, yeah. So it's understanding those dynamics. And the last gumball guy is the convince me guy, the skeptic, the one that is, I've just been really hurt and I have a lot of walls up. And so I just need to know that you're not like all the other girls. Hmm. So you feel like you're proving yourself. This was the the prove it gumball for a long time, but I was like, it needs to be something else. Convince me. I wanted the the names of the gumballs to be the actions he's looking for. Convince me, pity me, idolize me, arouse me, like all these different things. What are these guys looking for? That's the gumball that he's wanting. Get me high off of these things Mm -hmm. instead of me learning about you, who I'm, you know, building that connection and actually just getting to know a person and building a real foundation. That's completely boring to a gumball guy, but I was blind to this for so long, wasted so much time. So my mission is to help women see it before they develop those deep feelings to understand the patterns and be like, oh my God, I'm out of here before I end up you know, married or pregnant or whatever. I wanna help you get out before that starts. So all of the gumball guys are, there isn't, there isn't a positive in there. There isn't the gumball. There is not like the golden gumball that you're going for. Like these are the gumballs that you're saving your quarter. Don't put it in the machine and like walk away and go to go and get popcorn or something. (laughs) No. So he's putting in the quarter because you hold the gumballs. So in the world of a gumball guy, he's trying to get other people to give him attention Mm -hmm. and it's the flavor of attention he wants. And so your job is to look at it and say in this, in this dynamic, am I giving gumballs or is he recognizing the gym? So I want the girl, and this is, this is kind of in a progress, but I want when people have a healthy relationship, it's like two treasure chests meet each other Mm -hmm. and you've gone on a a hunt and a, an adventure to find that person. And then when you find them, you open up this treasure chest and there's jewels and diamonds and emeralds. And there's all, all of these things that you will cherish. You can't chew up a gemstone and spit it out. There's nothing to consume. There's nothing transactional. You just have to see the value and cherish it. And then you savor it. You're not going to, there's nothing, there's nothing transactional about it. And so that's, that's what you want to have happening. The guy that sees you and only wants to spend time with you. Spending time with you is, is the, is the action he wants or the, the, uh, I don't know, I'm not finding the right word, but that's the, he wants the experience. He doesn't want the transaction because if you're getting him high, a lot of times we don't, this is what I did not know was happening. 
if the guy comes in and let's say um, he's the convince me gumball guy and I'm really convincing him, like I'm not like all the other girls. Oh yeah, I know a lot of women can be this way and I'm not that way. And he's like, "Mm mm-hmm. He's eating those white gumballs. Like, yep, she's proving herself to me. And I'm sitting here, my hands behind my back. Like, oh yeah, she's, she's coming to me and giving me the attention that I'm craving. And that's making me feel high. Now in that heightened state, or in the high, he's going to act differently than he will when he's not getting that gumball. So pick him on a day where work didn't go very well, then he's super moody. How many times have we seen that happen? We're like, wait, where's that nice guy from the date? Now I'm, I've got this mm. jerk in front of me. What happened? Where's the mood shift? And then <laughs> 10 years later, well, not 10 years, it took me like a few years later, I realized, wow, that was when he wasn't high. And then what we do is we get in the habit of figuring out how to get him high because we want to go back to that mountaintop and we don't realize we're feeding attention and we're not building friendship and foundation. Yeah. I mean, I think that is that, that right there is everything. That's the reason why relationships don't work. That's the reason why I think a lot of people stay in the cycle of unhealthy relationships because they have those moments of those highs, like you call them, those moments where things are so good. And then it dips down and cycles back. And then there's another moment of really good. It makes you remember. And it's like, oh, I remember what it was like. I remember why I fell in love with him. I remember how good times were. And mm-hmm. then it gets bad. So I think that I think that, that that's a great way of saying it. Um, you talk about chase me, chase me stories. What does that mean? And do you have one? Chase me, chase me stories. What do you mean? Um, on your social media, you had, you have, were asking people to share their chase me stories. Oh, um, so this would be the, the gumball guy that, um, I think who knows what I, but I don't, I'd have to go back and look at that post. Um, but it's, uh, what, what I think you're talking about is the chase me gumball guy where, It's the guy that continues to come back into your life. Uh, There's a great line for the chase me guy. He does just enough to keep you reeled in, but not enough to contribute to your life. So um, the guy that sends the, um, let me think of a good chase me. um, Trying to, let me go back through my Rolodex (laughs) of uh, what's a good chase me story. Caught me off guard. Um, let me think of it. But the, uh, what I call the chase me guy is the hide and seek guy where I feel like sometimes you're hiding and then sometimes you're then, and sometimes you're seeking. So when you're seeking, he's texting, he's available and he's fun and he's everything I want him to be. And then all of a sudden he starts hiding to where I text him and he's not responding or he's not responding for several hours or several days. And then you don't want to get mad because that will kill the vibe. Right. So then you're like, okay. So then you might say something like, what's going on? I, are you, are you busy? And then you sort of feel needy because he was just engaging. He was just having that amazing banter. So it's like, where, where did that guy go? And then, then, then when he comes back, so I will tell you a huge uh, epiphany my own therapist gave me. He said, when, when he's available and he's engaging, you think you've done something right. When he's not engaging, you think you're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And you look at the gift that you had in your hand and then you question the value that you bring. And that's, that's the tragedy of that. We start looking, I always, when I'm in person, I have like, I'm just grabbing my phone. Like we, we look at it and we go, is there something wrong with what I'm offering? Am I, and that's, that's the message where it starts. I must not be enough because this guy sees it. And then sometimes he's engaged and sometimes he's not. So what's wrong with what I have to offer? And then there are all kinds of clickbait. I'm calling them there's clickbait advice. And I'm not going to pick on any man, but there's a, there are a lot of men that give dating advice about what men want. So there's one guy thinking he can say, this is what all guys want. That would be like me saying, 
what all women want. I guarantee yeah. we could go, we could, we could go through our list of the hottest guys in, in Hollywood and we would not have the same top 10 because Renee and I, we do not want the same things, right? Yeah. We don't want the same things in relationships, but we're both women. So this idea of what men want, I want to see go away. This is my mission because we're, we're, we're doubting the gifts we have to offer. Then we're going to one dude or two and saying, okay, this must be, this is what I'm doing wrong. Oh, men want that. Then I'm going to trade out what I was giving. And then I'm going to give this, does this work? Mm. And it's not even this it's, it's who we are. And we want, we want to get to the point where we go, oh, you don't, you don't like what you see. You don't see that value. Then I've got to move on to someone who does. So I, I have a client who actually, I've used this example so many times, she sells jewelry. Uh, she actually owns her family jewelry store and she was going through a breakup and the guy, you know, she was feeling this horrible rejection. And I said, what's the most expensive diamond in your store? And she goes, uh, 13, five. I go, okay, what if I offered you $10,000 cash for that diamond? no sale. I'm like, really? I mean, 10,000 cash, really no financing. No. I'm like, huh? What about 12,000? No. She goes, it's actually worth more than 13, five. You should have seen this girl who was looking all sad fight for the fact that I ain't selling you this diamond. It's 13, five. I go, because you're going to fight me. Why? Because you know, some guy is going to come in. He's going to lay down 13, five, you know, it without a doubt, there's no question in your mind. And you're willing to tell me with my 10,000 or my 12,000 or even my 13,000. No, no, no. Thanks, Melissa. This die. I go, because that diamond sits there like a smug bitch. <laughs> and she's <laughs> like, I am worth it. And she knows it. And so the buyer, the, the guy or girl that comes in and buys that diamond and is able to see the value and puts the appropriate money that connects to that value, that's when you have the sale. So it's when, uh, when value meets price, you have a sale, right? So that's what we have to look at. Is the guy seeing the value or is he seeing the value and then offering 2000 for a $13,000 diamond? You know what I mean? Like we have to know, but a lot of us don't know our value. So we're monkeying around with some guy who's like barely texting and thinking, oh, may, maybe, maybe I should drop my price to 2000. So we're always changing that lever of where we think our value is instead of being quicker to filter out, oh, you don't see it. Bye. If I could do that, if I could go back in time, this, when I'm writing my book right now, and if I was like, if I could give this book to myself 15 years ago, I would feel like I would have superpowers. This will give you superpowers if you're able to just absorb it and say, I'm going to act on this. I'm going to filter out. I'm not going to settle for anything less than someone who is seeing my value and joining my company, wanting to get to know me and building that foundation. Mm, I can't wait. When's your book coming out? Probably early 2022. I'm working with a literary agency. We're, we're working through the beginning stages of it. So I've got a very heavy outline and I'm just about to get in deep to the writing process. So I'm saying next year, but I'm hoping for sooner. So much fun. I was going to mention to you earlier, I'm like, this should be, this is such a cool way of talking about this. And it's a really unique way. And I was going to say to you, this should be a book. So I'm so happy. I'm so happy that you're doing that. Yeah. So Melissa, how do we connect with you and find you and follow you and all of those good things? Yeah. So it's gumballlove.com is my website and I'm the Melissa Ledger on Instagram. So it's M-E-L-I-S-S-A-L-E-G-E-R. Uh, and the person who has that Instagram has like eight posts and never goes on. But so I had to be the Melissa Ledger. So I could get my, I've, I've messaged her so many times to get that Instagram. Uh, and then uh, facebook.com forward slash coach Melissa Ledger is my Facebook. And we also have a private Facebook group. So if you have things you don't really want to post or comment on publicly, you can reach me there. Um, we, I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching right now. I don't have an Academy live. I'll probably have an Academy live. I haven't even said this anywhere else, but it looks like we're going to do probably a July on August, uh, Academy and eight week program that'll be coming up. So, uh, stay tuned for that. Awesome. You are fabulous. I adore you. And I will have all of those links in the show notes so everyone can connect with you. So one final tip 
or a couple final tips, I guess, um, for someone who is entering the dating world for the first time, post-divorce, they're scared as hell, they don't know what to do, where to start, what, do, what would you say to them? Mm, don't know what to do, where to start. I would say, ask yourself, what do I want and what do I need? And if you sit there and you not, you're not really sure what you want or what you need, do not do any kind of dating profile. Ask yourself, what is it that I want? What's going to fit into my life? Do I like my lifestyle? Would I want to be with somebody that has my same lifestyle? What do I want to change right now? Do I feel great about going into, am I feeling like my life is good? I'm feeling connected to my hobbies, my interests. I have a good network of friends and family. I'm happy. Or am I a sad single girl or a sad single guy? If you're feeling, feeling hurt, you're feeling sad, that is not the time to go. If you're, and if, if you're scared, then I would say wait and really figure out what is it that I want? And I want you to get really specific and down to, I want the guy to be tall. I want the guy to be this, that. I want him to, what is it? What is it that you're looking for? And the most important thing is, what do I need? Which a lot of people don't know. Like one of the things I said I needed is a guy smarter than me. Oh, like all the feminists roll roar. roar. <laughs> like I wanted a guy whose brain power was stronger than mine. So it challenged me mm-hmm. and in a way that, so maybe that's the wrong way to say it, but I just wanted a really smart guy. And I found that smart guy who corrects me on grammar and <laughs> pronunciation of words <laughs> that are super, he's super, super smart, but I love it. It's like, I, I want that. I want that. I don't want to dominate. I did not want to dominate a guy. I wanted him to dominate me in that masculine manly way, but also in a way that was supportive of me. Like he sits and creates content with me and supports this whole project. So I wanted that dynamic and I thought it was crazy to ask for it, but that's what I felt like. I need somebody who challenges me that will support my, my mission and my goals and my dreams, like getting that specific. So when you have it that specific in mind and some guys like, hi, how letter R letter U what's up? Hey, beautiful. Eliminate all those guys. Then, you know, yeah, that ain't it. That ain't ain't the guy, you know? So when you're that, when you're super specific, that's when you know how to eliminate the ones, even if they're cute, if they present in the wrong way, you're able to eliminate with so much confidence. Yeah. Cute only gets you so far. Yes, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Melissa. This is so great. I love chatting with you. Thanks for sharing all of your gumball words of wisdom. Thank you so much.